Welcome back to the Ross Bolin Podcast, presented by Bolin Media. I am Ross Bolin, here with Killer Cade Oris, freshly inked up Killer Cade Oris, I would note. How are you doing, Cade? Doing good. How about yourself? Hanging in there. Hanging in there. Nice. Doing my best. If you want to... That's all we can hope for, is just, you know, doing our best. That's all you can do. Yeah. Is your best. Mm -hmm. If you want to hear the story of Cade getting his first tattoo... Better hop on patreon.com slash Ross Bolin podcast to access the ad-free exclusive episodes we drop weekly this week, technically last week. Right. But on our most recent Patreon episode, we talked about uh, Cade's first tat. First of many, possibly. Which he's got covered up today. Yeah. Out of shame. Um, Well, no, it's a little cold in here right now. No, it's shame. Uh, And shame. That's the shame that's making you cold. (laughs) Every week on Patreon, those episodes are ad-free. They are exclusive. And there is a seven-day free trial available on Patreon.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast right now. If you want to get in there and check it out and see the hundreds of ad-free episodes we have dropped over the last several years. you got J-Bone episodes on there. we got interviews on there. A lot of great podcasts on the Patreon. We need you on Patreon supporting the show. Get in there. If you subscribe... You get twice as much of this show, arguably more than twice, because Patreon episodes are ad-free, so there's no time occupied by ads, and yet the episodes are always, almost always an hour or longer. Sometimes they're like an hour and 20 minutes on Patreon. We do hotline calls from listeners. Recently, we've discussed uh, not only Cade's new tattoo, but the Stripper Cade Saga Part 3. P. Diddy's arrest, divorced dad rock, what constitutes a mammal has been a big focus. <laughs> We've been struggling with that one recently. It's been a big focus as of late. Uh, those of you who are on Patreon may remember other uh, long-winded subjects like uh, like uh, two-hole maintenance or, uh, uh, I don't know, there are others. <laughs> <laughs> but recently we've been really we've been really stuck on what constitutes a mammal and then also on Patreon recently uh my latest battle with poison ivy which is a is a thing it's an ongoing battle it keeps happening yeah i didn't sleep much last night i i forgot to put my poison ivy cream on my arm mm. before i went to bed so it was itching like crazy. I kept yeah, that happens. I kept waking up, just like going at my arm like a crackhead. Yeah, and you never thought maybe I should go and put the the cream on. You're just like, I'm just gonna fight through this. No, it's, it's one of these things that happens, especially as you get older, especially when you have small kids. Once you're in the bed, you don't want to leave the bed. It's over. Yeah, there's no getting up. Mm-hmm. Like unless you're about to shit or piss yourself. Yeah, like yeah, and even then. Yeah, when you have to like take a piss like late at night, you're just like, ah, oh, can I like fight through this? Like, am I gonna be able to? And it's like it never happens. But yeah. yes, no, you never want to leave your bed once you're in it. No, and that just gets harder and harder as the years go by. Um, so yeah, I didn't sleep great. I've also been having these weird dreams. It's been a while since I remembered my dreams mm-hmm. when I wake up in the morning. I kind of go through phases. Yeah. Like it'll be literally months where I I don't remember my dreams. I assume I'm having them still, I hope. Yeah. I hope my brain's getting some kind of entertainment while I'm out. But uh, the last few days, I've been having this weird-ass like recurring dream where I'm I'm late to high school baseball practice. So I think it's like an anxiety dream. Because anything yeah. when you're late or like you forgot to study for a test yep. or you're butt-ass naked in class or your teeth nope, are falling out. Yeah. Everybody has those. <laughs> uh, the, the, those are usually driven by some kind of anxiety. But in this dream... I'm late to high school baseball practice. I'm like I'm like speeding through traffic to get there. And I pull up and it's my high school baseball coaches. And th- there's like at least th- 3 of them that I remember vividly being there. I think I had like 4 or 5 in total, but at least 3 of them are there and they start grilling me about why I'm late and why I don't have my class schedule and then it kind of morphs into like a collegiate situation like a college situation so yeah. i'm like combining high school and college into one dream right but with my high school baseball coaches yeah did he also tell you to that you needed to cut your hair too no my no. hair hasn't come up yet <laughs> no, okay it probably will now that you've mentioned it it'll probably happen tonight but 
Yeah, it's been freaking me out a little bit. Yeah. No, I just had one of these recently, too. Was, and, like, same thing, but it was football related. And it's like, oh, I forget my equipment. Or, like, I forget the plays. <laughs> oh, no. And so, like, coach is like, nope, you're not going into the game. I'm like, fuck. And, like, every time it happens, I just want it to happen once where I actually, like, you know, remember my shit and, like, I go in and, like, you know, make you a crush play. it? Yeah. Never happens, though. No. I'm always getting getting yelled at by coaches or I'm forgetting something. It's so annoying. Dude, it sucks. Like, I know there are people out there who do, like, the lucid dreaming thing mm-hmm. where you're apparently able to control your dreams, but that is not my situation at all because I'm yeah. never able to, like, you know, <laughs> respond to what's yeah. happening and make it better or right. <laughs> Or, or tell somebody to go fuck themselves or whatever. It's just me getting, like, punked by these three grown men. Mm-hmm. Also probably says a lot about organized high school sports. Yeah. That we were so stressed <laughs> that, you know... We were ten, so traumatized 10 from to it. 20 years later between the two of us, it still pops up in your dreams. Problematic mm-hmm. on some level. Yeah. Probably something I should bring up in therapy. <laughs> why, why do I keep dreaming about these? I don't even know if they're all alive anymore. One of them I kind of hope isn't. <laughs> Is that the, the head baseball coach? Yeah, he's a real dickhead. <laughs> making me cut my hair. Yeah. What an asshole. Um, also, you, so you mentioned Divorced Dad Rock. Yeah, yeah. And um, no, on Patreon, I like to talk about music a lot. And we talked about the my Spotify playlist. Right. Well, I just made a new new playlist. So I have Don't a downplay new... it, Cade. You're a Spotify playlist influencer. Absolutely, yes. And that is exactly what I am. But I made a couple of new playlists. And one of them I think you'll really appreciate. Actually, maybe both of them. But I do have a divorced dad rock playlist now. Yes, just full of bangers. Granted, I don't. Have you gone in on corn yet? Oh yeah, dude. I, yeah, I got some corn in there. I think you mentioned a couple other ones, uh, like stained maybe. Oh yeah, stained. Stains in there. Creed's in there. Yeah. Nickelback. I got some. Got some good shit in there. I still don't qualify Nickelback because it's too uplifting. Okay. See, that's the, the thing. I just like. I don't really know what. Like, it just needs, like divorce dad needs rock. To be, a little bit more like anger, anger and self-loathing than oh, yeah. Nickelback usually brings to the mm-hmm. table. Yeah, no, I got I got a lot of self-loathing good, stuff good, in there. Yeah, good. Um, and then I also have like a Get Crunk playlist, just like two thousand. It's just like just Lil party. John yeah. and Eastside Boys driven. Yeah, yeah, just stuff to get get crunk to. Some Yin Yang Twins oh, in there, maybe. Of course, yeah, have to have to be in there. Oh, I wish I could remember more of the. There was more people in that. Uh, I got like Three Six Mafia and like Project Pat stuff like that. Just just some like absolute bangers. From Three the, Six definitely counts from the two thousands. Yeah, in the crunk era. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm trying to remember. There was one dude. Spe- I'm not going to remember. I'm going to stop <laughs> trying to. Um, <laughs> but good. I'm glad you've got the the divorced rock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been, divorced I've been, dad rock. I've been playing it at the gym these past couple of days. You know, just switching it up from like my typical rap stuff. Yeah, it's been going going hard. The, the era of crunk happened while I was in high school, mm-hmm. and I got to tell you, that was something to behold. <laughs> we were all saying the word crunk. <laughs> Everyone was just getting crunk. We were, that's what we wanted to do. Yeah, so you guys were getting crunk, and when I was in high school, we were getting turned. Yeah, and then then kids were raging at one raging point. Raging and getting lit. And it, and it became lit. Yeah. Yeah, we just had crunk. We were simpler times. <laughs> Simpler times with very simple songs with easy to remember lyrics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, many of which were inappropriate for the whites <laughs> to be yelling, but we were nonetheless. It was a, it was a time to be alive, kid. It really was. Yeah, uh, yeah I was, I'm kind of bummed I missed that era. Yeah, it was fun. I was in like fourth or fifth grade when that was that scene. The came club, on. the club scene yeah. during the crunk era. A lot of anger. <laughs> yeah, dude, like little John. <laughs> a lot of fighting. <laughs> like a lot, a couple other. They were just like me- making like. Beat your ass in the club music. Like, songs that, like, if they played it at the club, you just, like, want to fight someone. Who sang Fuck the Club Up? I think it's, like, Pastor uh, Troy, maybe. Oh, uh. There's, like, a Waka Flocka song also called Fuck the Club Up. Oh, Tear the Club Up is what I'm thinking of. It's 3 Six Mafia. Yeah. Fuck the Club. Oh, uh, Nicki Minaj, who you really love, has a song called Fuck the Club Up, too. Tear the Club Up. Yeah. Good shit. Mm hmm. Kid, I got a question. Okay. What's your belly button game like? <laughs> Are you you working with an innie? You rocking with an Audi? I am an innie. I, I don't think I've ever met anyone with an Audi. I feel like those are pretty They're rare. rare. Yeah. They're rare. I also you don't gotta, know how you like have one or like get one, I guess. Like why? Yeah, like how that happens. Yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know if it's like jeans or something, but I don't really know. I've always been an any guy, and especially like when I when <laughs> I don't think you have a choice. It's not like you're one or <laughs> well, yeah. When I was when I, when I my point is when I was Bill Chungus when I weighed sixty pounds more than I do now, the any was uh, deeper. I don't oh, know. Okay, I got yeah, fatter, yeah, yeah. So there was more like depth <laughs> to, to the any, yeah. and I thought like when I lose weight, maybe it'll be somewhere between an any and an Audi, but no, it's still pretty cavernous. Like, you know, you could, you can fit a good thimble in my belly button, which, uh, is kind of fun. My son, is that what you do a lot? My son is, he's really into his belly button right now. So like he'll pull his shirt up and point to it and I'm like belly button. And he tries to say it and then he makes me show mine and he always looks at it and I'm hairy. So mine's like covered in hair and he always looks at it and he's just like, he kind of has this look on his face like gross, dude. He's not not impressed by mine at all, no. but uh, the reason I ask, okay, you haven't any. Does your belly button ever collect what could only be described as lint? Uh, granted, I'm not checking a lot. You but, should be. Yeah, but like, I mean, I checked right before the pod. And I'm I'm clean, so like, I don't think I really it happens to me a whole lot. So I need to know if this happens to other people because, like I said, I've got a cavernous any. You can stick a thimble in there. And it collects lint throughout the day. I guess from my shirts has been my assumption, but yep, like... That'd be the number one suspect. A lot of the time at night when I'm getting ready for bed, like my wife and I will be in the bathroom and, you know, I'm shirtless in there doing my, my skincare routine, brushing my teeth, flossing, all that good stuff. And, uh, and part of my bedtime routine is to pull all of the things out of my belly button that it has collected throughout the course of the day. And she'll look over at me, and she's like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, I got to get all this lint out of here. And she's like, why is there always lint in your belly button? And I'm like, I, I really don't know. I just assumed this was like a thing that everybody dealt with. I didn't know this was like a Ross-specific problem, but she's never seen anything like it or, or heard of anybody else dealing with it, so she shames me. And it's really confusing for me because I... It's not like I have a bunch of shitty t-shirts that are just like shedding thread yeah, constantly. Yeah, no, you have, you have some high quality shirts. And yet my belly button is somehow picking up all this lint from the inside of my shirts and I don't even understand how it gets in there because like I said, it's a hairy belly button so there's like a, you know, a barricade of hair. But the lint somehow gets through and camps out and then more joins it and it turns into like a little ball. So I'm pulling out like a good amount. That's yeah. I don't know what what you got going on. Let me there. see if I can get any. No way. You right now, no. I think it's clean right now. <laughs> yeah, it's clean right now. But <laughs> but I'm telling you, it's ha- it happens really really often, and it weirds me out. We, we, weirds my wife out uh, a lot more than me. Like there's so much lint in there that over the course of the week, like I feel like I could eventually like knit a sock, like a child's sock, with yeah. all this lint. I was recycling it properly, but I just throw it away. You know, I just put it in the trash can yeah, right. right there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you got going on. Cause like, yeah, like I never check mine, and I've never been like, oh wow, there's like a lot of lint in my belly button right now. Just like other whatever, like so. I don't know. I think the hair is somehow my hairy it's stomach like is somehow it. contributing to this problem. Yeah. Because when I was younger and less hairy, every once in a while I would check my belly button, like in the shower, and find like you know, like a little piece of dirt or mm-hmm. something, like yeah. a little treat. A little, a little treat? A little snack? A little shower <laughs> snack? <laughs> a little dirt snack? <laughs> Something to munch on? <laughs> but now it's it's always lint, and it's always like an amount that is shocking, where I'm like, God damn, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, no, I've never never pulled out a shocking amount of lint. And I'll check my shirt. I'm like, I look on the inside of the shirt. I'm like, is there like... Is there like a lot of mm-hmm. stuff in here that could work its way down and in? Yeah, I'm thinking it's the hair. It like helps collect it, and then like it just like forces it towards it, the middle yeah. somehow. Because I don't have like a very hairy stomach, so maybe that might be why I don't have a lot. Do you shave it? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, like every every few weeks. Do you especially shave like your... when I know I'm doing my my stripper gigs? Like, oh well, yeah, you, know, you got to be smooth for that, right? Exactly, no doubt. Do you yeah. shave your chest? Yeah, but I like don't have a lot of chest hair. We talked about this like before. It's I have some like some nipple hair, like around the nipples. Yeah. So I like shave those because it looks weird. <laughs> it's just around the nipples, but I don't know. It's kind of great, in my opinion. <laughs> just, just nipple hair. <laughs> Mine's like mine, like every other. Well, I guess my head hair isn't patchy. Uh, knock on wood, fingers crossed. But 
my facial hair historically kind of yep. patchy. It's gotten better the older I've gotten. Yeah, but my chest hair, right there. Well, and then like, oh, and right, there's yeah, there's one under my chin too. They just like, I don't, what the fuck happened there? And just nothing grows. But my chest hair is patchy too. Like, there's a big swath of it mm-hmm. where you know where it should be. But then there are like these random patches of it above the swaths, above my nipples, <laughs> and then like a couple down on the stomach. Anyway, lately I've been wondering as I look at myself in the mirror uh, and pull belly button lint. I'm like, should I be shaving this? Should I be like organized? Is should this, is this like? Can I just be all natural, or is that fucking gross? I don't even know anymore. I've started to judge my body hair. Yeah, that's why I like eye shave because like there just like isn't much to begin with. I just feel like I would look like a child if I shaved it. You know, yeah. I don't have like a ton of definition. So the the hair is the main thing making me look my <laughs> age. If I shave it, I'm like I look like a twelve year old boy. So and I have really small nipples, which I've also brought up. You know, I have a small boy's nipples. I think all the drugs I did when I was in puberty stunted my nipple growth, yeah. and and they just stayed like penny sized, like they're small. Like you know, that's a little nipple, dude. Do I have a big? Nipple? You have regular sized nipples. That's like two of my nipple. You do have only nipple hair. That's fucking hilarious. It's like a ring around. <laughs> yeah, dude, like I got like some right here and like. See, you've got a good belly button for catching lint. I don't know what the fuck, but there's no hair over. Yeah. See, like this is like. See, this is the hair's all over it. So it's like it gets caught in there. It's like a net. Like I'm fishing, except it's <laughs> for for lint only. Anyway. <laughs> I guess that's probably enough about my body for today. Yeah. But I just wanted everybody. I, if you have the same problem as I do with belly button lint, we want to hear from you on patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast. Call the hotline 888 WR Boland. Tell me about your situation, how you've handled it, perhaps what you do with the lint. Is there like a more <laughs> productive way I could be using this lint? And uh, if, if there's a way to solve the problem without shaving, because like I said, I don't want to look like like a small child i just no. don't no no you don't I, and, and with, with you're almost com- 40 you don't want to be looking no like a child. and the combination of the small nipples and the lack of definition <laughs> it just i i need that hair it's part of my identity so moving on one of the ways i've been combating sleep deprivation due to the two small children occupying my home without having to drown myself in coffee and deal with a hardcore crash in the afternoon is Magic Mind. As someone who gets jittery when I drink coffee and energy, energy drinks, I've been looking for something better to help me maintain my energy and focus throughout the day in a more effective way. That's where Magic Mind comes in, and today's episode is brought to you by Magic Mind. I've been pounding a Magic Mind right after my morning smoothie for two weeks now, and have found it to be incredibly helpful at keeping my energy and focus up throughout the day without the devastating crash that other substances usually bring me. It comes in these little bottles, like the one I'm holding if you're watching on YouTube. It's a little shot. You just toss it back. I keep mine in the fridge right next to my smoothie stuff, so I remember to grab one every morning. Magic Mind is a mental performance shot, in addition to your daily routine that gets you focused, mentally clear, motivated, and productive while reducing stress with mushroom mushroom, nootropics and adaptogens, plus over 100% of your daily vitamin C and D per bottle. Magic Mind contains matcha, which extends the benefits of caffeine if you're a coffee drinker by slowly uh, slowing your body's ability to absorb caffeine as well as a compound called L-theanine that reduces stress. These compounds work together to prevent the spike in cortisol levels and the inevitable crash that comes from ingesting too much caffeine. Matcha is basically nature's extended release version of caffeine. Magic Mind also donates five cents for each bottle sold to mental health charities that help U.S homeless communities. They're 100% carbon neutral, and they're so confident in what they've built that they refund 100%, no questions asked, for 100 days after buying. Shipped internationally to over 65 countries, they're now in Sprouts, Central Market, and Irwan. It's that like Los Angeles, California 
grocery store that I'm completely mm. unfamiliar with, but I always see jokes about. Anyway, with Magic Mind, I've found I'm more productive, more creative, and more calm while staying energized, all without the crash that too much coffee brings. They have a limited offer that the RBP gang can use now that gets you up to 48% off your first subscription or 20% off one-time purchases with code RBP at checkout. You can claim it at magicmind.com slash RBP. Support the show and your mind at the same damn time with Magic Mind at magicmind.com slash RBP for 20% off your one-time purchases, code RBP at checkout, or 48% off your first subscription. Uh, so I was on the way to work today, and I was approaching a red light, okay? And I was the only car approaching this red light. So just the way traffic flowed coming out of my neighborhood, I was the only person. And as I'm approaching the red light, I see this uh, solicitor in the median, right? Mm -hmm. Getting ready to pounce, and he spots me. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> and I'm not talking about like a person experiencing homelessness. Uh, I guess he could have been, but it, he's holding like a ticket in one hand, like some kind of a ticket. Okay. And then like a collection... I don't know, pitcher in the other hand, like a repurposed beer pitcher that he's using to like let people throw the money in or whatever. And uh, oftentimes around my neighborhood, because there's a high school right there, they they do this for you know, so parents will donate to different causes. Sometimes there, I can tell. I'm like, this is a fucking scam. This isn't even a real thing. This is like just some dude. Anyway, I'm the only person at this fucking red light, and the dude is like, I. I'm intentionally with my body language being like, no, I'm not yeah, looking yeah. at him. I'm not like waving him over. Certainly I'm not giving him any sign that I am interested in whatever the hell it is he's got going on. And yet he approaches. So I'm sitting in my car. He walks off the median, comes over to the car. Dogs are in the back seat. They both start going bat shit. And I just, I look over at him and he's holding up the ticket, you know, six inches from my fucking driver's side window. And I just mouth, no. <laughs> Dude, what was the ticket? What no idea. Say? No didn't, idea. Didn't take the time to check out what it, what it was. I don't care. I don't fucking care. That this this should not be a thing. No. In 2024, the the time of the fucking traffic solicitor should be over. It's over. It frankly, the time of the solicitor in general is over. If you're in 2024, you're still knocking on doors or ringing doorbells and soliciting like random business, whether it be like in our in our neighborhood. We, we get this all the Bowling time. Bowling Media, we get people that are like tree tri trimming companies, roof fixing companies, all kinds of random shit. We got we got one. You Salesman here, uh, about our like internet, like our Google Fiber. He's like, oh, I forget who he works for, but it was like AT and T or something. It's like, oh, we can like you know match their speed. At a cheaper price. I'm like, I, okay, I don't, sure, but like, I don't care. <laughs> I just live here, guys. Yeah, I just live here. Yeah, and a lot of the, the guys that come to your door, a lot of the time, they're salesmen, right? So they're not supposed to take no for an answer. So when you open the door and you realize it's a solicitor, a lot of the time what I do is I'm like, oh, no, no, thank you, man. And oftentimes it's like around dinner. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm about to sit down with my family. Like, this is not a good time. And they just like keep trying to talk, like, oh, well, what would be a good time to come back? Or like, or just let me leave this with you and you can check out our products. And I'm like, dude, no, fuck off. Yeah. Like, please, for the love of God, get the fucking clue here and leave me alone. And I, I really don't get it. It seems... It's got to be like a low success rate, too. Super low. Brutal job. Brutal. I feel for these people. It's not that I don't. I realize everybody's got to work. Everybody's got to make money. But that job sucks. And at least that's like a job. The soliciting in the median thing, I don't think that's a job. I don't think you're getting, like, an hourly wage. I think this Probably is, like, not. some shit, like, a lot of the time it's a scam, a lot of the time it's charity stuff, but, like, bro, the internet exists. If you're a legitimate charity and the way you're finding donations is by bothering people in traffic when we're in fucking Texas, man, a lot of people are strapped. You're just walking up to windows? Are you insane? The world is a terrifying and dangerous place in this day and age. We're all on fucking full tilt all the time and people are just approaching car windows want this stuff <laughs> give me money like fucking get out of here dude get out of here it's it it just it put it fucks with my nerves i can't stand it i hate it these people have got to stop i i want to get like a almost like the uh the driving crooner but instead of it being a fun 
hat, and cigar. It's just something that, just like a big sticker that says, like, no, leave me alone. Yeah. Please stay away. And then if, I guess if I get pulled over, I just have to quickly roll down my window so the cop doesn't see that. But <laughs> I, I can't handle it when these people approach my car, and they, especially when I've got the dogs in the car, and they start oh, because they always go, yeah, batshit crazy. And they're not going to stop until the person walks away, and they usually stand there for a few seconds, like... <laughs> Are you going to roll anything. it down? Are you yeah. going to roll it down? I can't hear you. I've got my music up. Sucks. There's a... Um, so, like, closer towards downtown, there's people that will, like, wash your windows for you. Oh, yeah, the window washers. Yeah. The worst version of this. Mm hmm. Because they don't take no for an answer either. They just start going. Yeah, they, yeah, they start going at it. And like, they, yeah, do not care. And you could be like, you could like have your windshield wipers going and they're still going to like just Fight like deter it. them. Yeah. No, they, they do that, not take no for an answer. There's the other problem. Who the fuck is just driving around with cash? Not me. I never have cash. Sometimes I'll see a homeless person and I'm like, I, I, it, the moment strikes me and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to throw this dude like five bucks or something. But then I don't have it. Yeah. You don't like, you don't have any spare change. No, I don't keep, I don't, I keep my shit clean, dude. Yeah. I keep my car clean. There's not just change or trash or any of that shit. My wife probably has like all, all kinds of stuff she could hand out. <laughs> I've noticed this about women, moms. This is a mom thing in particular. You're putting so much energy towards these other more important things like parenting, work, taking care of your house, et cetera, that they just, like the other day I drove my wife somewhere, I can't remember where, and the next day I, I check my uh, passenger side door and she's just like stuffed, I guess she had like a snack, the trash is just in the, in the door, because that's what she does in her car. Her car is just, I'm sorry for calling you out on this, but your car is disgusting and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll just be like foods and and kid snacks are all over the back and I think because a lot of the time she drives the kids like the the back seat's just absolutely fucked so it's like well screw it I might as well do the same thing in the front seat right but I can't live that way in my car it oh yeah clean. my car is spotless I can't there's no shit no shit in my car and I don't let the kids eat in my car it's a rule because <laughs> they're 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 animals too many crumbs. They don't successfully get enough of the food into their mouths, so then it's just everywhere. And I don't want to have to fucking deal with that, so that's how you get ants. Everybody knows that. Everyone knows that's that. How that's how you get ants, ants in your car. car. Yeah. Um, and, like, another place where I, to go back to the solicitors, another place where I see this all the time is at my gym, or at least, like, the one I used to go to. They used to have people, you know, like... Out front? Yeah, out front of oh, the gym, brother. like, promoting, like, whatever nonprofit or whatever... And they're like, hey, like, they like, ask you, like, how was your day? And, like, can you, like, talk for five minutes? I'm like, no, oh, no, sorry. Like, I'm here to get shit done. Yeah, I, like, I will, like, have my headphones in and, and just, like. Point to them? You got to point to them. Oh, no, I just, like, look down or, like, I'll be, like, looking at my phone, looking at nothing and just, like, <laughs> dart right past them. Um, the and Girl then, Scouts are bad about this. Yeah. Oh, well, Girl Scouts are different. No. No? You're not. No, they count. But they're, you know, they're selling cookies. Like, I, don't, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit. It's always outside a restaurant or a grocery store. Yeah. I'm already here for food. I've seen them post up at like a THC store before or like that's whatever. That's genius. Yeah. That's where they should be. That is where they should be. Yeah. No, that's certainly not the gym. If I no. go to the gym and there's a Girl Scout cookie seller outside, we might fight. Oh, I'll see. I might. So counterproductive. I might. I might. Buy a few boxes or ten. I don't, no, I'm not. I'm not hating on Girl Scout cookies. I love Girl Scout yeah. cookies. They're dangerous though. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful because you open a sleeve. Oh yeah, no, I can. I can take down a sleeve pretty easily. You, I say. Do you have the self control to put some of the sleeve back <laughs> in the box for another time? Uh, and the answer know. for most of us is sadly no. No. Yeah. Also, another thing with solicitors, I found out is like. If you, like, say you're under the influence, like, if you're drunk or, like, high or whatever, then they can't, like, talk to you. So, like, me and my one of my friends, we were walking to or from his pool, and, they're, like, again, there's just, like, people waiting outside of, like, this Target, and they stopped us. And I don't know what they were trying to sell us or talk to us about, but we, like, told them, like, yeah, we're, like, just, like, coming back from the pool like drunk as shit right now and they're like oh okay well we can't talk to you then 
So like that's just like a loophole to to get out of that, I guess. What? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was that one particular solicitor. I, I'll try it. Because I mean, like, next, it makes time, sense I, next like, time I pull up in traffic and somebody approaches my window, I'm just gonna roll down the window and go, "I am fucking hammered. <laughs> I'm shit faced right now," and see if they'll just be like, "Oh wow, never mind." I mean, I maybe they knew that rule. I don't know if like all solicitors know that rule or like will abide by that rule, but that's just what they told us. They're Fucking, like, "Yeah, we can't talk to you then." I'm like, "Awesome." After we record today, a roof repair guy is gonna ring the doorbell and I'm gonna answer the door and just go, "I am so stoned." <laughs> And see how he responds to that. See how he handles it. Yeah. That would be a great loophole if, in fact, it's real. But there's no way that works on every <laughs> solicitor. Anyway, I'm, I'm sick of having my car approached. It, it freaks me out every single time. And I I don't think I've ever donated to a charity that way. Because how do you even get, like, part of the benefit of donating to charities that you get a tax receipt? So like when you drive, have you ever dropped off clothes at like Goodwill? No, I take them to Plato's Closet. So I can oh yeah, because I'm poor. So I so they <laughs> they'll give you like a a receipt, a tax receipt that you then get like a a, a write off on your taxes or whatever. But I don't think you get that just in fucking traffic. Also, I can't tell you how many times, not so much in Austin, but in Houston, growing up. We'd be at a red light, the person in front of us would engage the solicitor, and then the light would turn green, and then everybody behind the person who's dealing with the yeah. solicitor is like, get the fuck out of the way, like honking, because they're taking too long. Ah, oh, it's just the worst. They gotta stop. They gotta stop. Um, Cade, do you know who Moo Dang is? <sighs> yes, but not really. Like, I've seen the pics, I see, see he's going viral right now, but I have no idea. Like, like what what his deal taking is taking over social media. I yeah. wouldn't even call it viral anymore. It's like the next level, whatever the level above virality is. That's where Mu Dang is at. It's this baby pygmy hippopotamus, mm -hmm. but it looks it kind of looks like a big ass turd, <laughs> like a just a <laughs> giant human shit <laughs> with eyes. And it's not that it's not cute. It's just that it looks like a human shit with eyes. Um, but if you get on like X formerly known as Twitter, or Instagram right now, and you're scrolling for even a minute, the odds are you're going to see this animal, this baby pygmy hippopotamus. And it's exactly like the situation with, like, the Rizzler, yeah. where I keep seeing this chubby little kid, and I'm just like, I don't care. I don't want to know. I'm not going to look it up. I'm not going to give in and be a part of this. And then eventually it breaks me. And I'm like, day four, I'm like, all right, that's it. I can't keep looking at this hippo. <laughs> And not know what the fuck is happening. So if you're like me and you had no idea, it's this baby pygmy hippopotamus in a Thailand zoo that was born and has somehow become a worldwide internet sensation. Uh, but now that's becoming a problem. It's a two-month-old, okay? And for what everybody's jumped on this hippo train. But now the fucking baby pygmy hippo, which is named Mu Dang has become so popular that the zoo in which Mu Dang resides is dealing with bad behavior from visitors, and there are so many visitors that they're having to limit the time that each person can spend in Mu Dang's presence to five minutes. So, like, in and out. Yeah. You know, stand there, do your photos, and you're done in five minutes. But because there's a five-minute limit... People are getting to the section of the zoo with Mu Dang and being like, all right, time to get these fucking pics off. And then Mu Dang isn't looking. So they're throwing shit at the baby Literal pygmy shit hippo. At, no, no, but okay. like, you know, <laughs> yeah. peanuts or like a fucking trinket. Yeah. So that it'll look their way so that they can get a picture. God, humans suck. We're idiots. Yeah. Um, yeah, it says uh, I'm on NPR. Photos of Mu Dang, who is just two months old, have flooded social media with the Utah Jazz, including the hippo in a post about the team's home opening game. That is a very random <laughs> reference to pick. Uh, Sephora Thailand celebrated Mu Dang's stardom by posting on social media about how to, quote, wear your blush like a baby hippo. Sephora is a makeup brand, that's my understanding. Mm -hmm. She has also drawn a surge in the number of visitors to the Kai Kao Open Zoo in Chonburi, Thailand. 
but zoo officials have limited visitation because of water being poured on her and objects being thrown at her by visitors. In social media posts over the weekend, zoo officials said visitors could see Mu Dang for only five minutes on Saturdays and Sundays. I'm assuming that's when they have the most traffic. Uh, the director of the zoo issued a statement last week warning there would be legal consequences for those who harass the beloved hippo. Quote, these behaviors are not only cruel, but also dangerous. We must protect these animals and ensure they have a safe and comfortable environment. And then it asks the question, why is Mu Dang so popular? Why is she so popular? Which is what I want to know, right? It says, Mu Dang was born on July 10th and rose to fame after the zoo began posting videos on social media of her eating and even opening a door. Her mother, Jonah, is 25 years old and her father, Tony, is 24 years old, according to the zoo. She is the seventh baby hippo born to her parents at the zoo. A TikTok page dedicated to animals at the zoo with more than 2.7 million followers has been sharing Mu Dang videos with hippo fan videos gaining millions of views across Instagram as well. Her name, which means bouncy pig... It's a hippo. Was chosen by more than 20,000 visitors through an online vote and revealed in late August. The pygmy hippo is an endangered species with only about 2,000 to 2,500 mature individuals remaining as of 2015, according to the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species. Their numbers are continuing to decline as they are hunted for bush meat and their habitat is destroyed, the Pygmy Hippo Foundation says. They are smaller than a common hippopotamus and are primarily found in West Africa and countries such as Liberia, Sierra Leone, Guinea and the Ivory Coast. So it sounds like it's a combination of uh, Mu Dang's species being relatively rare. And then also, also there's just particular baby pygmy hippo, in my opinion, that looks like a giant human turd with eyes, is, is just very cartoonish. Like it's, I mean, it's cute. Very cute. Very chunky. Very small, very chunky, chungusy little hippo. And then it makes like these cute little... Like faces, but like, does that even look like a hippo to you? You know, no, not not really. Um, are hippos mammals? Oh wow, yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm oh, so yeah. confident. Yeah, I'm so confident. Yeah. Okay. It's the after elephants and rhinoceroses, the hippopotamus is the next largest land mammal, but of course, the pygmy probably not. Mm -hmm. Actually, there uh, with those regular sized hippos. But yeah, if you Google. M O O moo like a cow moo dang d e n d e n g uh, and you look at all these there's like an insane amount of photos and then pretty quickly as you scroll you get to the merch oh because he has that merch so much unofficial moo dang merch that it's just truly disgusting and then apparently moo dang is also some kind of Thailand uh, dish. So you start to see pictures of food as well, which when mixed with baby hippo pictures is a little unsettling. Yeah. To be honest, TBH. Are they, are they eating the hippos? There? I really hope not. Yeah, that would be great. Especially the endangered ones. Yeah. That wouldn't be ideal. Yeah. I'm desperately trying not to work in a Haitian dogs and cats joke right now. Mm. And I won't because I'm above that. You are. I'm above that. I do. Oh, this is some some great stuff right here. They're putting mood dang in like different. Oh uh, yeah, photoshopped into different things. Yeah. What is that? Jaws probably. Oh no, that's, no, that's uh, uh, Godzilla. The Godzilla uh, minus one. Yeah, yeah. And that's the other Godzilla. Mood dang is fighting Godzilla. Mood dang being trained in Jurassic Park by what's that guy's name? Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. Mood dang as E.T. as E.T. being flown in a blanket in a basket yep. on a bicycle. Love love a good f movie Photoshop. It's good, yeah, great, great stuff. Anyway, if you're if you like me, have been wondering like, what the fuck is this thing? That's what it is. It's a baby pygmy hippopotamus that just happened to become extremely famous, and now so much so that like all fame has become a problem. Even the hippos get too famous. Yep. Shit can break you. Makes life hard. And that's the thing. They don't even know that. Like Mudang has no idea how famous he is. Probably Mudang didn't pick this. No, he just wants a. Uh... Mudang well, is like a Kardashian. happy hippo life. Karda like a Kardashian, just born into it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Or like a member of the British royal family. Exactly. Had no choice or say in the matter. Maybe when Mudang gets old enough, he'll break off like Prince Harry did. Yeah. Wait, so... So they named him Mudang. Wait, mm -hmm. the people did or like the zoo did? The zoo put up a poll, okay. I think, and, and let that's... people vote, and they picked Mudang. Okay, and then the parents were just, what, Tony and 
Jonah. Jonah, Jonah, Jonah pretty, Tony. pretty basic names. Yeah, and like then this that. one's a bouncing pig. Yeah. Which still, I don't... It's a hippo. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> that's, that's the situation with Mood Dang. I'm a huge fan of live music, going to concerts, and attending live sporting events. There's no better way to make lasting memories, and there's nowhere better to get tickets for all the aforementioned than Game Time. Some of you may remember several weeks ago, I used Game Time to get my wife a birthday present. Tickets to a Niall Horan concert, and we had a blast. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for concerts and events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out all the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Game Time makes getting tickets for concerts and events faster and easier, even if you don't buy tickets right away. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to showtime. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying concert tickets. I've got the Game Time app pulled up, and right now in Austin... You can grab tickets to a ton of different musical acts like Post Malone. It's coming in uh, October. Or Pink. Go see some Pink. Or Little Big Town. I know Cade's a huge Little Big Town fan. Oh, absolutely. Huge fan. Vampire Weekend also going to be here in October. Don Tolliver I saw in in Sampha in November. And Ray LaMontagne. Ooh. I'm a big Ray fan. That's what I've heard. Yeah, you were bumping her before. It's a guy. Oh, it's a guy. (laughs) You don't even know. I don't even know. You know know nothing of Ray. Sad, very unfair. <laughs> of course, lots of sports like Texas football, Austin FC soccer games. You got Texas Stars hockey matches, F1 tickets. Uh, yeah, ton of live comedy shows as well here in Austin. Game Time has it all and makes it incredibly easy to find and buy tickets to sports concerts and shows. Game Time is also extremely helpful just to keep up with all the events in your area. If you're like me and pretty unplugged from the social pipeline, you can see what's happening tonight. See what's coming up on the calendar. Grab last-minute tickets if you're feeling spontaneous. Also, they hit you with flash deals, zone deals. You can check out the view from all the seats in the venue before you purchase so you won't be bamboozled. With last-minute deals, you save up to 60% off buying last-minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. Game Time also offers lowest price guarantees, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, and so much more. Take the guesswork out of buying concert tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code BOLIN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code B-O-L-E-N for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. It's game time, Cade. You're supposed to say it, Oh, Oh, you want me? Okay. You just looked back at me. Jesus. Well, because you always say it too, so I wasn't. I wasn't. Yeah, sure. but I always wait for you to say it to see if you will, and you never oh, do. Okay. <laughs> you never do. You just look at me like a fucking idiot, like I'm an idiot. Uh, we're both idiots, though, if we're being fair. Uh, big news in the sports world, by the way. Speaking of game time, Adrian. How do you say his last name, Kate? Woj Wojnarowski. Wojnarowski. He, everyone knows him as Woj, Woj yeah. and that's why, Yeah, because that's an insane name. <laughs> Woj Narowski is just too difficult to say. But the man known as Woj retired from ESPN this morning. Saw that. This final Woj bomb, and if you're not an NBA fan specifically, Woj became known as like, you know, like Adam Schefter for the NFL? Right. He's the guy that knows... When injuries happen before they even happen, trade signing. He's, he's the breaking he's, news guy. Yeah, he's very plugged in with all the super, teams. Super, super connected. It's actually a pretty brutal job. Like if you ever watch an interview with Woj or Shefty, they they like their phone is going off during the interview mm-hmm. almost always. Like when Shefter goes on the Pat McAfee show, which Kate is very familiar with as a huge fan of it. Uh, he plays it all day every day in the office. Um, Pat always heckles him when his phone goes off. He's like, "What was that?" Was it was that a big was that big news? Are you yeah. gonna tell us about it? Can we get it here first? And Schefter always has to like play it off. Um, but the job does truly seem miserable. And both of those dudes, Woj and Schefter, have been at it for like over a decade. Yeah, a lot of screen time. Like so much screen time bro. through the roof. And then yeah. like when the trade deadlines approach, those are like multiple days without sleep for these dudes. They're working nonstop around the clock. They have to develop and maintain relationships with all these insiders on every single team. Including general managers and 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 um, uh, scouting guys, so that the and the the team's medical team, so that they can get plugged in when anything happens. Um, 
miserable, miserable job, but pr- very cool job if you're like super obsessed with sports. And uh, in, in the case of those two dudes, they make millions of dollars. Um, anyway, Woj is always the dude that anybody who's a big NBA fan is aware of him and follows him. And all, he over the years, every time he drops like a huge piece of breaking news, it's called the Woj bomb. And now that's gone, sadly. Which, I didn't know this was like a thing that was about to happen. I'm not sure if anybody did. But uh, yeah, as of this morning, uh, according to ESPN, it says, ESPN senior NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski has agreed to become the general manager of the men's basketball program at St. Bonaventure. So it's not just that he's retiring from being the ultimate NBA insider. He's taking a job as a GM of a men's college basketball program. I didn't know college basketball teams had a GM. I didn't either. I'm like, one- I know like ADs and stuff, but like that, unless that, it's like the the same thing. But I don't think so. I don't think it is. I I maybe it's like a new position because of the NIL stuff. Now they have general managers. We could both be way off here. Maybe they've always had general managers. But like when I think of a general manager, I'm thinking of professional sports. Right. Not college sports. You never hear about college general managers. No. So maybe that's a new thing. Um, but yeah, he's gonna be a GM. And I think I think he attended this. Yeah. Wojnarowski is a St. Bonaventure alumnus and has a strong relationship with the program, it says on ESPN, including as a fundraiser for the school's collective in recent years. He's a 1991 graduate of the Western New York School and a distinguished alumnus from the Jandoli School of Communication, which, if that's confusing, uh, that's just what their comms school is called. It's not a separate school from St. Bonaventure. Uh, Woj said, quote, It is a thrill of a lifetime to be able to return to a university and community that I love in a role of service to our student-athletes, coaches, and institution. I'm hopeful that I can bring value in a lot of areas to our basketball program and open doors for our young men's futures in ways both professionally and personally. Now, uh, if you're like, big deal, Ross, who cares? Why are you talking about this? Not only am I a huge NBA fan and a big Woj follower for like 15 years now, um, this was such big news that every single sports account I follow on both the social media platforms I check regularly, Instagram and X, posted about this as breaking news. Mm -hmm. It's like Schefter even posted about it as breaking news. So it's weird getting on X and seeing, I'm just going to call it Twitter again. Yeah. Getting on Twitter and uh, not taking ecstasy. Getting on Twitter and seeing Woj's face everywhere in these breaking news posts, but they're about him. Yeah, he's usually the one breaking the news. And his job. He isn't the breaking news. Really fucking weird. But also kind of a cool poetic way for his career as a the ultimate NBA insider to end. But that'll be a big change in this yeah. upcoming NBA season. And I guess do you, are you like do you know who's gonna take up the mantle for him? Yeah, Sham. Shams. Shams. Yeah. So I guess Shams really is the new Woj. And over the past couple seasons, what's his real name, Shams? And why do they uh, always go by these nicknames? I'm assuming he has a pretty difficult to Oh, his name. real first name is Shams. Oh. What's Shams Charania. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably so, easier to yeah. go by Shams. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Um, but over the past couple of years, Shams has become like more prominent. Yeah. And there were different breaking news things where like Shams and Woj were like battling. Yeah. Who could be the first one to get off the breaking news first? Right. Yeah. And now it looks like the torch has officially been passed. Mm-hmm. Maybe Woj just wanted to make sure there was somebody there to take up the mantle before he bowed out and went and lived his real dream job as a general manager for a college basketball team. But. Uh, if that if that was indeed the case, he accomplished that. So now, we all got to make sure we follow Shams. Yeah, and he works for the Athletic, so that's a different company. Mm-hmm. And I saw that his contract is done at the end of this year, so there's going to be like a bidding war for him. And I assume to... ESPN will get him. Yeah. That's my assumption. They will throw a huge bag at him. Yeah, because he's and he's always on Pat McAfee too. Yeah. So like he has some kind of a relationship with them. And frankly, it was a little weird when last season Pat started having Shams on. People were like, "What the fuck? Why isn't he having Woj on?" Woj is the ESPN NBA guy. Right. Shams works for the Athletic. And this might have been why. Maybe. Maybe. Woj has known for a while that he was going to walk away and, like I said, kind of teed it up for somebody else to take up the mantle. Anyway, big news in the world of sports that changes the whole fucking 
game in terms of the NBA uh, breaking news world and is the end of an era. The end of an era, Cade. Mm-hmm. Mm. Very sad. Yeah. Well, you and I will both spend the rest of today mourning, I think. Oh, for sure, yeah. 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 That'll do it for today's show. Kate and I will be back later this week with another ad-free premium episode of all new content available exclusively on patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast. Hit Patreon now. Sign up for a seven-day free trial on our page where you can check out the hundreds of exclusive ad-free episodes we have published there over the last several years. Enjoy that seven-day free trial. Check out the Stripper Cade Saga Part 3. Go listen to us talk about P. Diddy's arrest. The diddler. He went down. Down goes Diddy. Down goes the diddler. My Poison Ivy story, etc. Then stick around on Patreon to uh, support our show and make sure our show can go on. Please support our sponsors when we have them. We had a new sponsor today, Magic Mind. Go to magicmind.com slash RBP. Get 48% off your first subscription or 20% off a one-time purchase with code RBP at checkout. That's magicmind.com slash RBP. And, of course, Game Time. Download Game Time, the, the Game Time app, and uh, redeem the code BOLIN for $20 off your first purchase. Anytime you see our sponsors, please support them. Go to the links in the description of each podcast episode to see the sponsors, to see the URLs, to see the dedicated codes. Use them. Thank you very much. J-Bone is back at uh, Formula Bone reporting on the latest in the world of F1. If you're a big F1 fan, check out Formula Bone's recaps and previews for every race all season long. Go to youtube.com slash at Formula Bone and subscribe. Follow at Formula Bone on Twitter. Jared, uh, for those of you who miss him, has done a fantastic job with Formula Bone. And if you are an F1 fan, you will love Formula Bone's content. I promise you that. If you are a Houston sports fan, check out Banging the Can, where every week during this Houston Texans football season, I will be dropping an episode recapping and discussing the most recent Texans game. So I've done two already this season, one for week one with the Colts and one for week two against the Bears. Next week, I will have week three, uh, hopefully another win against the Minnesota Vikings. And then as we roll towards Astros playoff baseball here in the next few weeks, I will be doing Astros coverage as well, so banging the cans, busy season is upon us. If you are a big fan of TV and film, check out Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, also hosted by me with my dear friend Mr. Barrett Dudley, where we are about to start coverage of The Penguin on HBO. Most recent episode, we covered The Batman in preparation for The Penguin because Barrett had never seen The Batman, so we watched it, discussed it. And then uh, this week, because there is no Penguin episode yet, we're going to be talking about the David Chase wise guy documentary that's on hbo about the uh, creator of the sopranos david chase and sort of the making of the sopranos incredible documentary i highly recommend it if you're a fan of the sopranos and after you watch it go listen to or watch oysters clams and cockles where we discuss it recording uh, later today actually follow me on twitter and instagram at wr bolin mr oris where can the people follow you you can follow me on all the social media sites at Kate Orris. That's K A D E O R R I S. This episode of RBP is presented by Bolin Media. Video of today's show was produced by Kate Orris. To watch said video, go to youtube.com slash at the Ross Bolin podcast. Until next time, remember you are not alone. Peace be with you and also with you.